hello. So, what is this? This is an F12, 2430 odd millimeter focal length. It's a nearly two and a half meter focal length. Um, eight inch mirror, classical Cassegrain telescope. There's the extension tubes. There's two one inch extension tubes and a two inch extension tube. Is. Fantastic. So it's just behind some clouds at the moment. So what we have here is an EQ5 mount, which is, has some motors and um, some basic controls here. And I'm just powering it on a seven amp hour battery. And it's pretty spectacular what you can see through the eyepiece. So what I'm going to do, what I've done is I've taken off the one inch extenders and I've got a two inch extender, then I've got the focuser, then I have a diagonal here, which is basically what the two extenders were doing. And then a simple eyepiece, just a 25 millimeter. And what I can see is, is basically the moon is filling that eyepiece quite comfortably. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a camera in here. I'm going to take some images of the moon. Oh, brilliant. The clouds are clearing. So I'm just going into shot cap and we'll take some videos of the moon. Brilliant, really good. Okay, so this is what I'm actually seeing. So that's what we're seeing through the scope and let's go on a bit of a tour. So this is a 
and there's the famous impact crater. In fact, should we see if we can image that? Let's move that across and down a bit. So I'm just going to go for a 30 second capture. There we go, so it's now doing a 30 second capture. And even at this rate, it's still, it's at 64 frames per second. There we go, let's finish that. So let's um, go across the moon again. There we go. So that's the moon. This is an F12 2430 odd millimeter focal length. It's a nearly two and a half meter focal length. Um, eight inch mirror, classical Cassegrain telescope. It is a very specialist telescope. It's designed for planetary imaging uh, and lunar imaging. It's uh, not designed for nebula work. It's um, not designed for galaxy work. Because it's F12, its um, light gathering speed is slow. So in order to use it for things like uh, galaxy work or nebula work, it would just be too slow and your exposure time would have to be huge, absolutely huge. And um, uh, it would take days, literally days of collecting light to get an image. However, for really bright solar system objects, planetary and um, for the moon, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be really good. Now, this particular scope, uh, classical Cassegrain design, so it has a primary mirror at the back here, which the focuser is attached to. It has a secondary mirror at the front, so collimation is a major thing to think about because you've got three places to collimate, the primary mirror, the secondary mirror, and if you get a focus tilt adjuster to go on the back here, then you can adjust the actual positioning of the focuser as well. So I'm going to move you down and we'll have a good look at this focuser. So, here we go. So I've moved it down. So here's the focuser that you can see. Now, when, when it arrived, I was a bit confused because when I moved the focuser, this part didn't go in and out at all. And it's because there is a lock on this side. So if I just lift this up, you'll see there is a lock just there. So you have to tighten that up. It's friction based. And when you tighten it up, like that and then adjust it you can see the focus tube goes in and out here's the actual full focus lock just there and this telescope comes with three extenders you have a two inch extender here or 50 millimeters and you also have two 25 millimeter extensions you can see they're screwed together there now when i did some imaging with it uh, the other day just to test it out I didn't use these two, in fact I took them out and I used a diagonal instead to make up the distance there. Now I intend, uh, because I'm in, you're going to use this for planetary work, I intend to use an eyepiece to find the planet and then I lock off my mount and I engage the uh, right ascension motors to track the object. So I'll still want to use this but then I will put a camera on with a short extension, a 50 millimeter extension um, into where the eyepiece goes and then I can do my imaging. So that's kind of how I plan to use it. Um, the telescope itself comes with both uh, the Vixen mounts and also a Los Mandy mount there as well. And you can swap these round. It is possible to swap these round. You just change this bracket across 
and also um, you'll notice that there is another bracket just here if you want to put a finder scope on. So there is a fitting there and there's a grub screw in this hole and then there's a normal thumb screw here so you can tighten it on there but it doesn't actually come with a finder scope but I've actually already got some of those so I don't I don't need another finder scope. Um, now this scope although it has the Altair brand on the side as you can see it's actually a GSO scope and um, they're also available from other suppliers First Light Optics have them as well um, and basically it's a GSO scope that is just branded in uh, the supplier's own brand. So this is a GSO scope branded Altair and Altair is written in various places on the actual scope and also on the focuser as well. Um, it's about nine kilos. It's okay to lift. I was using it on an EQ5 mount. Ideally you really want to be on an EQ6. So if you want it to be absolutely rock solid an EQ6 or bigger would be best. Um, however, it was fine on my EQ5 Pro, uh, which I uh, restored a while ago, and um, it tracked well and I was able to adjust it, as you saw in the video. It's built like a tank. It feels really well built. And on the inside, um, now I don't like opening scopes when I'm not using them because I don't want dust to get in, but on the inside, it's actually baffled all the way down to prevent any reflections and light bouncing around inside the tube. Um, it's a monster, it's really good, and I'm really looking forward to using it. So um, here are a few early lunar shots that I took. Now these ones were video that I stacked together and processed, and I have to be honest, they're not as sharp as I would have liked. However, I think I will get them a lot sharper as I get used to the collimation on this and also um, get used to the uh, seeing because the seeing conditions, as you saw from some of the videos, uh, it was really wobbly because it was so humid and so warm. So I wasn't at all concerned because I know that this scope is capable of delivering quite astonishing results. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you can. I really appreciate your support and I really look forward to showing you more images with this amazing scope. Take care everybody and stay safe.